Hello and welcome to another episode of Golbezan podcast. Today I will be your host, Sina Soemian, and uh, I am joined by two of my good friends, Percy, Daniel, in uh, Paris, right? How are you? Hi, Sina. Hi, everyone. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling great. How are you, Sina? Very good. Thank you. Very good. And uh, of course, we have the prodigy that is Erfan in uh, in the Persian Gulf. How are you, Erfan? Yeah, thank you, Sina. I'm very happy to be here again with you, both you and Daniel. Good. Good to see and hear from you both. It's been a while since I've been on the podcast. Uh, and if anyone's wondering, Arya's on, on a vacation, well-deserved vacation at the moment. So I've got big shoes to fill on this episode. Today, we'll be going through a variety of, of topics, mainly around the performance of our players in Europe and uh, some stuff around the domestic football, whether it be the, the domestic league or the Asian Champions League. So we've got a few things to take off. But firstly, um, I just wanted to kind of touch up on the tragic news that came out. I think it was two days ago, the uh, tragic death of Melipa Mohammadi, uh, who was a member of our women's national team. Um, and she passed away in a, in a very unfortunate accident in Iran. Erfan, I know you've been um, kind of following that closer than, than I have. Um, tell me a little bit more about Melipa um the kind of place she was and also uh just generally uh, a little bit more information regarding regarding the accident itself uh, so yeah as you said it's uh, something very tragic that happened a few days ago uh medica and two of her teammates uh, zahra khajavi and behna star khani were having dinner at the restaurant um they were returning to their camp their team camp at the hotel and uh, unfortunately um they crashed on the way and uh, Melika tragically passed away. Uh, there are some good news though. Behna Tarhani and Zahra Khajabi, they were uh, both in stable conditions in the hospital and they are expected to make a recovery. Uh, but it's very unfortunate as we lost Melika, who played at the Asian Women's Asian Cup for Iran in India. And she was one of the one of Iran's uh, main players actually in the women's national team. So yeah, um, it's very hard times for not only Melika, but for the entire team, Bam Khatun. I believe uh, their Women's League game got cancelled as well, yeah, which was supposed to be held yesterday. And I really hope something like this doesn't happen again, because it's very sad to see. No, absolutely. And our thoughts and prayers are with her family. And we wish a very speedy recovery um, to the other two players as well. Um, now, moving on to the topics at hand for this episode so firstly um i wanted us to kind of discuss the performance of our players playing outside of iran um considering we are midway through the season now and um i think there's quite a few things on there that's definitely worth um kind of discussing first topic on our list of uh discussions is mehdi Taremi's season now uh, obviously, we know he had a, a, a fantastic year last season um, with a very dramatic summer uh, with a lot of transfer rumours around his his future. Uh, he ended up staying at Porto, entering his final year of his contract. Now, Daniel, I haven't been following his games as much as I did last year. Um, so how do you summarise his performances in the first half of the year um, for Porto? Well, I think that uh, for um, Tarmi, it's fair to say that he's been deceived by uh, the summer transfer window. He expected to a nice move to to another club such as uh, AC Milan or or another one, since he did uh, really great years uh, even before last season at Porto. Uh, so he's been underperforming. Uh, he's been scoring less. He's not been playing badly. I, I've watched most of these games and. He's playing well in in average, um, but uh, yes, we, we can see that he's been affected by this. His team is weaker too. Uh, the the Porto lost uh, some great players too, and uh, but yeah, he's been playing good in uh, in uh, Champions League. He has almost uh, uh, the the same amount of goal in Champions League than in 
um, the Portugal league right now. But uh, I just hope that he will be at his best for the Asian Cup because it is understandable that he's been affected by the 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 sad transfer window. But yeah, I think he should overcome this. So and look forward. Um, there are rumors sending him to Inter next uh, summer, so that would be great for him. And uh, I believe that he's our best player, so we really need him to be at his top. Um, you mentioned Inter Milan and, of course, AC Milan that he was linked to over the summer as well. There's been um, Tottenham mentioned as well from one of the teams that he's been linked to. Personally, where would you think his best option is that we would really see him flourish? Well, for me, uh, Inter uh, is a great club. Uh, I think they're... Uh, I'm personally an AC Milan fan, but Inter is... Uh, is much higher in their level of football, in their sporting strategy, uh, in the 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 means they have and everything. Uh, or Tottenham was a, a great choice uh, if uh, he had the opportunity. Uh, Premier League, I think it's something hard to refuse, and uh, and uh, they were at the end of a of a cycle, but right now they're they're doing better than uh, last year, so. Yeah, I think that uh, Tottenham or Inter was uh, were both uh, great choices. Erfan, what are your thoughts? Um, of course, with the Asian Cup coming up as well, we're going to rely on him and Osmoon to to continue that amazing partnership that they have. How do you think his form going into the tournament will help us? And also, just on the back of what Daniel mentioned as well, um, obviously that the rumours will be um increasing even more across the next few months as he enters that final six months personally where do you think um is the best option uh, for Torimi? uh okay so yeah as daniel mentioned uh, i think over the summer and with all those transfer rumors uh, especially towards the end as the milan transfer failed uh, that kind of affected his performances um i wouldn't say he's playing badly but for his standards, and especially compared to last season, I think last season was his best season since moving to Europe. Um, it's tough to live up to the, uh, the expectations. And uh, yeah, like Daniel said, he's been playing decently in the Champions League as well. Uh, two good uh, left-footed goals. Uh, so it's not like he's lost it. He's, he still can play very well at the top. Um, but yeah, I think maybe the fact that he's in the final year of his contract has kind of distracted him. Um, I hope he can uh, now shift his focus out of club football and maybe a bit more uh, on the national team because uh, the Asian Cup coming up in just under three weeks. Um, yeah, it's very important for him. And if he can perform better there, it can be even uh, better for him uh, next summer. Uh, as there are rumors heating up right now that he might sign for Inter on a free. And yeah, I agree. I think that Inter is probably the best option for him right now. Um, Alexis Sanchez is rumored to leave the club as well. So they are looking for some forwards. Um, Tottenham, with I think Richarlison is doing a bit well with them now. I don't know if he will start every game for them. Uh, so I, won't, I wouldn't be too sure about that. And yeah, I think Inter would be the best option for him. Now, staying in Italy, uh, we already have one striker who's playing there, our first player since Rahman Rezaei days in the mid-2000s, and that's Sardar Osmoon under Jose Mourinho at Roma. Um, he's not been getting a lot of opportunities. His games I have been following. Uh, he gets maybe the last 10-15 minutes of, of uh, most games, and those games are generally where Roma's fallen behind. I think, if I'm correct, he scored one goal. Um, and obviously they're quite um, kind of, they, they have a lot of numbers up front with Lukaku, Dybala, uh, Belotti, of course, El Sharawi and Osmoon. Now, Erfan, staying with you, how do you think his performances have been? He had a very disappointing year last year at Leverkusen in Germany. Um, the injury to Tammy Abraham um, meant that Mourinho was looking for a for another strike option. I think we were all excited about him going to Roma, but then they ended up getting Lukaku, which then obviously meant that he ended up losing out on a spot in the, I think, the Europa League uh, squad as well. So how are his performances? And, and do you think um, 
his lack of game time would be beneficial for the national team going into the Asian Cup, meaning that he might be a little bit more kind of fresher than uh, if he was playing every game. Uh, yeah, you mentioned Lukaku getting signed up after Osman. A lot of people think that, oh, that's not good because he's not going to start anymore. But I think it challenges him to be a better version of himself. And uh, to me, even though he's not getting much playtime, I have a feeling that he's just happier at Roma than he was last year at Bar Leverkusen. Um, he's very, very good with the fans I've seen recently. Uh, they like him. Uh, uh, they like his character a lot which hopefully gives him confidence for the upcoming Asian Cup. Um, I don't think it will affect him much, the fact that he's not getting uh, 90 minutes every game. Um, he's still training with those top players almost every day. And um, we have no doubt in his quality. We know how amazing of a player he can be for us, how important he is for us uh, alongside uh, Mehdi. Um, so I hope he's included in the Europa League squad for the knockout stages because they're allowed to add, I think, two or three players for that. And I think he will. Um, yeah, hopefully he does well in um, those games as well. And I actually want him to get signed up on a permanent, even though it seems kind of, um, seems kind of uh, that's a low percentage that that's going to happen. But yeah, I like him to stay in Rome rather than go back to Bayer Leverkusen, even though they're doing really well in the league. Daniel Erfan mentioned that um, Osmo looks like he's having a lot more fun in, in Rome. And I have to I have to say it's difficult not to have fun in Rome. You know, it's a beautiful city. He's playing for one of the most uh, passionate um, kind of set of fans in Italy. Um, playing for someone like Jose Mourinho, playing with the with the superstars that he's playing with at the moment, as, as Erfan mentioned. So, and this is no disrespect to Leverkusen, who are really kind of flying high in the Bundesliga this year. But I, I would... I would expect that to be the case for him to have more fun in Italy and, and in and in Roma. But I did read a few weeks ago, and this might have just been a rumor that another Italian club wants to take over his loan agreements from Roma. I don't know how much truth there is to that. Um, but would you like to see him stay permanently in Roma if his game time doesn't improve across the next six months? Yes, of course. Um, I completely agree on the fact that he seemed much uh, happier, especially uh, playing under uh, Jose Mourinho, one of the best coaches uh, football has ever known and one of the most uh, special one too. Um, <clears throat> he, we were quite, uh, we were all uh, excited about the the transfer last summer. I remember how Pejman on the podcast was uh, excited about it playing under um, Jose Mourinho and um, um, we were a bit concerned on the lot of striker that they have but at that time I said that uh, he has the talent to to earn uh, his uh, starting spot in the in the in their uh, lineup and um, I think that he showcased uh, some yeah some uh, some uh, glimpse of his talents but we're still waiting for him to 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 show everything. Uh, I think that uh, Jose Mourinho likes him, but yeah, it's uh, it's uh, a bit always the same story with Osmoon. Uh, he has talents, but we're still waiting for him to score twenty goals in a top five league, and he's not uh, been achieving this uh, for now. He has the talent, but talent for football players doesn't mean everything. Uh, it's all it's uh, a lot uh, about uh, your mental and uh, not getting injured and fitness and etc and in the last few games he he got a couple of minutes uh, and he was doing a good uh, entrance but he got a small injury and that kept him off when he could have a chance but uh, uh, starting up front with Lukaku but uh, yeah Jose Mourinho started Belotti instead since uh, Osmond uh, was was just injured, so he, if we he continues like that and he's not getting injured after uh, uh, the Asian Cup, he can, uh, I think, he can uh, earn um, uh, more playing time. And of course, I will be one hundred percent happy if he stays permanently at Roma. I think in the games that he's been coming on, from what I've seen, he's been 
and this might be me being biased, but uh, he's been very impressive in those few minutes that he's been getting compared to compared to Belotti, and hopefully that will improve, and, and we'll see him in the Europa League as well if he's added to the um, to the squad in the second half of the year. Now, moving on to England, we have to talk about Bordeaux. It's, it's, it's been an incredible story. He was released by Brentford, re-signed uh, again after the summer transfer window, and he's. it feels like he's one of the... Um, main performers at the moment. Erfan, how do you see his performances? I mean, Thomas Frank, his manager, has been very complimentary of him. I think he's played so many positions on the pitch, which is obviously very beneficial for Iran as well, because we have a player um, on form and now approaching the Asian Cup, a player that can be extremely influential for us as well. Yeah, not only a player on form, but a player on form and the best league there is. So, that's uh, something very nice to see. And um, he's just been playing uh, like uh, like they say in Iran. He's like the Ashar of Aran said. He can play anywhere on the pitch. And I think that's um, what's uh, been really good for him. He's been playing everywhere there is, whether it's uh, right wing back or left back. And the fact that he keeps putting those shifts in wherever he plays. And I think even the Guardian wrote an article on him. Uh, about how important he is uh, to Brentford right now. Uh, even though they haven't get, been getting uh, the best results, Odus is one of the few players that have uh, seems like he's really trying for the team and giving it all. And he's kind of turned into their poster boy. I mean, <laughs> you've seen all, all these uh, posts on Instagram and all these tweets on him. Uh, he's getting much more popular amongst the fans. Uh, no one would have expected this, but certainly not me. I would not have expected uh, something like this to happen after uh, he left Brentford in the summer. But I think that him being re-signed by Brentford um, was a win both for him and Brentford. In England, we have another player as well in in um, Al-Dahyar at Hull City. Daniel, I want you to give me your thoughts on on Odus and and... As Erfan said, it might have not been something that we were expecting in terms of his turning performances and, and how amazing he's been doing. But on the on the other side, seeing Al Bahir on the bench or maybe not included on the squad on, on most match days is disappointing. Me and Audio went to Leicester and, and saw Hull City beat Leicester 1 0. And he played about eight or nine minutes. And I think that's as much game time as 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 he's got. So um again, where where do you see his future? Uh, do you think he has to move, um, if not in January, then then over the summer? And how do you think he can be, whether he can be influential for us or, or a, a key performer at the Asian Cup, especially considering he's barely had any game time? Well, um, quickly on, on Rodos, uh, as Erfan uh, said, uh, yes, it's a complete, uh, complete uh, shift. He, he, he was trying... Uh, last season and the season before uh, to uh, gain uh, some uh, play time and and, right, and then during the summer his contract expired so he was free and then they call him back like we need you so he wasn't trying to gain play time but they called him so he can play sometimes and he's been complex completely relaxed it's, it's like he's playing without any any fear and he's really relaxed on the pitch and he's showcasing that even out of position he can play well and he sh he's showing everyone how a good football player he is tactically technically and he, he we feel that he can almost play in every position and uh, it's really good for us uh, since he's uh, playing at the highest level and he's in form so let's just hope that he won't uh, get injured and he will continue like that but he will be really uh, key for us uh, during the Asian Cup and on uh, a lawyer, it's a, it's a big deception because at the beginning at Hull City, we we're all uh, quite excited by his performances and and um, and his transfer. I think Championship is a very good uh, league for him to improve. But yeah, he's not playing. Um, he was about to move this summer, but it didn't happen. And right now we have a player with the potential, but not uh, not uh, using this potential, not. Uh, ensuring that he will have a, a, a bright uh, career. And for now, I don't see him at all next uh, near Tim Melly. I think that he has to to focus on himself and to uh, 
to uh, yes well, re regain some gain some claim time play time uh, play more regularly and uh, get back to where he just uh, left uh, last year i think in um, one of your responses towards osman you mentioned that you know he's a very talented player but talent isn't you know isn't all be all, be all and end all and i think that also applies to a play like Allah who we know is very young and and very talented, but and again we we don't know what goes on behind the scenes, but we hope that he is working hard and he gets the opportunities that uh, that he deserves. Now, obviously, we have a lot of players uh, kind of dotted around Europe, so I'm just gonna um, come to each of you with one country, and then we can go through the players in those. So the first one is Greece. We have Milad Mohammadi and Esan Har Safin, um, AK Athens. They've not. I don't feel like they've been doing too well this year as uh, kind of the, the, the club. Um, I watched them against uh, I think Marseille in in uh, in the Europa in the Conference League. Um, and Hard Safi, although he got a couple of assists, I think in that tournament, I'm not sure if they've been doing too well in in the league individually. Uh, so I'm going to come to you, Erfan. Um, how have they done? Uh, both of those players um, so far. Uh, well, from the players themselves, it's a pretty similar story to last season. Uh, Hodge Safi is the main uh, starter and Milad comes on either late or whenever Hodge Safi is not available. Um, I'm happy for Hodge Safi with his age, you know, still playing at a good European league. Um, I think it shows a very good mentality from him and he can just go easily to one of the leagues and around the Persian Gulf and get some easy cash, but he's not doing that, and I think that's very good. Uh, yeah, you mentioned he got a few assists in the Europa League. Uh, I think he got two assists in the same game, uh, both from set pieces. Uh, that's very good for him. Um, they've not been doing too well as defending champions of the league. I think they're third or fourth in the league right now. I'm not sure. And they're out of the Europa League as well, so maybe not the best uh, as a team, but Esson is still uh, putting up his good performances. Mirad, on the other hand, um, to be honest, he's not been up to it at all. Uh, dare I say, I, I might even drop him uh, for another left back at the Asian Cup. Uh, I released uh, the squad I think should be called up the other day on Twitter, and I actually included uh, both him and uh, uh, Jalali. Uh, but... I think I won't be too surprised if only Jalali gets called up because Esan, as we know, he can play left back as well. Daniel, we have two players in Turkey as well. And, and again, talking about the national team setup, we, we know we've got, we've got issues at left back and um, Erfan touched up on that. But another issue that we have is that centre-back where we've, I feel like we still don't have a very strong uh, central defence partnership. Now, one of those options is Majid Hosseini. Um, how has he done so far this year? And of course, Ali Karimi as well, who's also another uh, potential squad member for the Asian Cup in, in central midfield. Um, how have they done um, so far in Turkey? Well, it's good to see uh, both of them uh, play uh, regularly um, in Turkey for, for the club. Uh, I'm happy to see uh, Majid Hosseini back in the starting lineup. I think that he's a, he's a really good center back uh, when he's playing at his top and uh, could be a, a, a really good asset for us. Uh, since I feel that uh, nowadays uh, our team only problem, our, I mean, our first problem was the midfield, but right now with someone who's playing in center midfield, I think that our main, main problem right now is our defense. We saw it at the World Cup. Uh, uh, conceding a goal against a, a team like USA and not conceding uh, uh, or almost conceding uh, the same amount against Morocco or Spain or or Portugal uh, four years before the shows us uh, that uh, our defense is lower than than before so having Majid Hosseini playing uh, playing regularly could be a could be a good point and um, Ali Karimi, well, I'm happy that he's been playing more than Majid, actually. He's been playing well, but 
even if I'm happy that uh, an Iranian Les Junior is playing uh, well in Turkey, I don't think he's a player that have uh, uh, the talent to be in uh, our starting lineup. He's not near uh, someone Rodos, for example. And um, he's uh, uh, a player with not a lot of pace and uh, he has some good characteristics, but he's not a player that will give us a lot regarding the players that we have currently uh, in the team. So he's a good backup, but uh, yes, he could. he's not a, a mandatory player in our list. Staying with the topic of central midfield, uh, Erfan Daniel mentioned that Ali Karimi may not have what it takes to to start. Uh, obviously, we know what uh, has to be guaranteed starter. But another player who's been uh, kind of a key member of the squad in the last few years is Ahmad Nurullahi, who plays in UAE, um, as well as Mehdi Ghaedi, who could also be a, a wild card if you want to if you want to call him that. So. Um, what is your take on those two players? How has Nurullahi got on? And is Qaidi still playing for Farhad Majidi, if I'm correct? Yeah, uh, Qaidi still plays uh, with Etahad Kalba and Farhad Majidi. And the situation of these players are a bit complicated. Now, both of them are having very, very good seasons, uh, especially Ahmed Nurullahi over the past few games. Um, as a midfielder, uh, he's getting all those goals and assists. Um, he's never had this kind of form before. And it's kind of crazy because he was dropped from the Team Melly squad in the last camp. So it's a weird uh, weird uh, way of getting a confidence boost. I don't know, maybe that uh, sparked something in him. But um, I'm, I've heard that there was something between him and uh, Kalinoi. Uh, he was mad or that he got dropped from the uh, from the list of the World Cup qualifier in one of those games. I think it was the game against Hong Kong. Um, so um, now, how, how, however of an opinion you have on Emil Galeno, he's still the manager of the team and you have to respect his decision. So Ahmad Nurlahi, I think he, for, for both his good and Team Millie's good, he needs to be a man, you know, give Emir a call, apologize to him because w- with the way he's been playing and I've been watching his games, He's been very good, as better than some of the other midfielders we have nowadays. Um, so yeah, I think he should be in the squad, but he needs to do the right thing, which is apologize to Amir Galinoi. And then the other player uh, here in the UAE is Mehdi Gaidi. Unfortunately for him, I don't think he's going to get called up for the squad because he hasn't been involved with Team Meli over the past few camps at all. Uh, but he's been doing well for it at Kalba. He's uh, had some uh, good goals. Um, he really likes chipping the goalkeeper from what I've seen. Three or four goals by uh, chips. And he's won a few pens as well. Um, now, Etihad Kalba aren't um, a top team in the UAE league like al are. Uh, so it's a bit more difficult to do that for them. Um, he's a good player, but I think he has a lesser chance of getting called up to the national team. Now that we're talking about the Middle Eastern leagues, if we could just move to, move to Qatar as well, because I know we have Hasboviat... Al Saad and I think Omid Ibrahim is still playing there as well now. I know you mentioned that you put out or you tweeted uh, the squad that you think should be called up. I feel like I saw somebody else's and they had Omid Ibrahimi in it. So again, I've not been following him um, in Qatar. Is that do you think that's 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 a possibility? Ibrahimi getting called up, how have his performance has been and how has, has Bobby settled into Al Saad? Yeah, Hasbovi, first of all, I'll start on him. Uh, he's been doing very good for them, you know, shockingly, even though at the beginning of the season, he wasn't uh, really getting much game time, maybe one start in the first seven or eight league games. But after that, uh, I think Asad got an injury. One of the defenders got injured and he's he stepped up well onto that role, uh, started the rest of the Champions League games. Uh, he's starting uh, at that age, starting for the best or one of the best teams in Qatar uh, it's very good uh, very good experience for him and uh, he should definitely be uh, called up to the national team um, he's young um, he's um, he's experienced for someone of his age and I think he should be a mix of the squad considering the problem we have at central defense right now and the other player um, who's about twice of Hasbobi's age is um, Omid Ebrahimi. 
and surprisingly with his age he's still uh, putting up shifts uh, with Al Shamal I think he plays for he captains them as well and um, he's he's been getting into the team of the weeks in the Qatar league all the time and um, I think he's just a very good and very experienced player that uh, we should have in the squad and I think he does have a good chance of getting in the squad as well because he was in the last camp I believe it was and as well as the World Cup we saw he was called up by Kairos but unfortunately he was injured and I'd like to see both of them in the squad uh, let, let's not forget that age uh, uh, doesn't mean anything right now we have uh, Modric uh, 38 playing for Real Madrid the best uh, uh, club in the world so yeah, let's not forget that Esan Hajsafi is only 33, so he's not that old. He's been a, a few years now that he's playing for Team Melli and he has a, more than 100 caps, but yeah, he's not that old. So seeing Omi De Brahimi perform at, at his age, of course, it's a, an exemplary uh, for everyone, but uh, it's uh, less and less a surprise nowadays. That's a very fair point, Daniel. Um, and as you said, you know, if his performances uh, kind of merit him being called up, then then why not? Uh, regardless of his age. Um, now, just moving back to Europe, we have two players that I wanted to touch up on. One of them being Jahan Bash at Feyenoord and Poli Zade in Poland. Um, Jahan Bash, I think, has been more mostly injured this year. Obviously, they had an amazing year last year in in Holland. All these other, I feel like, has been the same as well. Um, Daniel, what are your thoughts on those two? And and from what I've read, Paul Izzade is being linked to a move to Persepolis as well. How do you see that um, as a as a potential transfer? Well, uh, on John Barsh, uh, last last season, he was doing a, uh, he did a great season. Uh, he was doing well, and uh, he was almost expecting a, a, a nice move at the end, but. Uh, I was saying that he wasn't this winger, uh, first winger on the 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 starting eleven. He was playing a lot, but he was playing a lot because they were playing on uh, on different uh, uh, tables. So right right now uh, he he's been injured a lot, uh, so uh, it's a much more difficult um, season for him. And let's hope that he will uh, will have more playing time uh, since he's back. Uh, and let's hope that he will be in form for the Asian Cup. He's not been. Uh, and about Roli Zode, I hope that he will um, showcase uh, all his talent because he's a very talented player. Uh, he did, uh, I think, well in general uh, in Belgium and we expected him uh, to play uh, maybe uh, in a in a better club but yes i think uh, going back to iran won't be a good move uh, he's a talented player he knows how it's working in europe so why going back to iran as i mentioned one of the rumors going around at the moment is polizade's potential move to perspolis um, so moving things over to iran now Efron, I wanted to ask you about the league, the Persian Golf Pro League this year so far. As always, there's a lot of drama um, and we could sit here and talk for hours about everything that is either wrong, funny, or just the drama that happens on a weekly basis. Uh, but what I want to start is what I've been reading about the points deduction that were applied to Sepahan and Perspolis. Um, and those points deductions have now been rescinded, so they've been um, kind of there's no more points deduction uh, any longer. How did that come about? Why has it now been essentially cancelled? And how has that impacted the league? Um, yeah, right now, you know, it's very close between the top three, Sepahan, Perspolis and uh, Estarla. Uh, Sepahan were deducted four points after the fourth match day. Uh, for breaching some of the new uh, kind of fair play, financial fair play rules that were um, conducted in the beginning of the season. Uh, same with Paris Police, uh, but theirs weren't, wasn't as heavy as Sepahan's, so they were just deducted one point. Um, and there's actually another team that was deducted points as well. I'm going to go to that a bit later. Um, and the, today, 
um, the Federation announced that the, the points deduction was uh, rescinded and uh, the points have been given back. And I'm not sure what the reason is. Um, they haven't given uh, any specific reasons, but there has been rumors that they're just going to scrap the whole FFP thing um, and uh, have a half point of the season, which is so dumb. I mean, if you're going to make a rule, and stick to it for at least one season. Um, so, yeah, the other team that were deducted points uh, was Sham Sazar, which is so unfortunate for them. They were deducted three points because they used one um, illegal player last season in the Azadegan. And it wasn't even like he was starting every game. He played, I think, one game, and it was just the last three minutes of a game. And instead of deducting the points in the Azadegan, they've been deducted in the points in the uh, PGPL. And they've been playing so well uh, for a team that have just gotten promoted. Uh, Said Deiri has been playing some of the best football in the league with them. Uh, they don't have the best players, but the football they've been playing, especially against the bigger teams, have been amazing. Uh, so Said Deiri has been doing a great job with them. And it's unfortunate that they've been deducted three points. But the good, good for them, they're still doing pretty well in the league. I think, as you said, you know, if if you're going to bring a set of rules, um, then it should be, you know, you, you don't just go back and go back on your word, you know, midway through a season, and it and it would beg the question that if it wasn't the big clubs, so in this case, Sevan and Persepolis, and if it was two or three teams at the lower end of the table, if they would have gone back and rescinded those point deductions. Uh, Shams was there as well. I, I actually caught one of the games against Paris Police, which I think was a couple of days ago, and they were very unlucky um, to lose that game. So so they definitely look good. Um, Sepahan, there's a there's an interesting, well, I say interesting story, but R- Rami Rezaian's performances have definitely been pleasing to see. Daniel, we have Mohar Rami as well, who's who's playing in, in Croatia at the moment, especially with Reza Jan's return to form and considering his performances in the World Cup. Is it safe to say that he's our starting right back from the Asian Cup? Well, of course he is. And as I said before, age is not a problem right now. Uh, Ramin is performing very well for a national team and even in for his club. And... I think that Moharami is a, is a good football player. He's been playing in European competition too, so he knows what uh, what uh, the level high level is uh, in football. He's experienced it again, great teams. But uh, Romin Rezaian is doing much more on the pitch. He's a uh, uh, part of uh, the 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 few players that uh, do more than just uh, what you ask them to do. And they can uh, score um, in any game. Uh, they can give an assist in a game, any game, create a, a nice chance. And he's always giving 200% on the pitch for national team. And that's amazing from him. Erfan earlier mentioned um, Jalali, the left back at uh, Esterlon, who uh, could potentially be called up. Do you think that's another uh, domestic player that? can be part of the Asian Cup and and he to be honest he he had a cameo against the USA in the World Cup as well and performed particularly well. Um yes, he, I'm ahead of Milad Mohammadi. Yes, yeah, I think that uh, Milad Mohammadi is, is quite um well we we're all disappointed by by him. I think he, he came to Europe early uh in Russia. He did uh, not bad in general and uh, we expected him to do to do more. He played in uh, Europa League uh, with uh, uh, Genk, his club in Belgium. So he had the chance to to have a, um, a stable and great career in, in Europe. But yeah, right now he's a, he's not even a, a, a starter in the Greek league. So yes, having Jalali instead of him uh, with the performance that uh, uh, Jalali showed us, I think it's it's a it's a fair uh, option. Everyone's yeah. Probably... Uh, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, just no problem. Adding on to that, um, before even though I'm an Estadal fan, I would have said I don't think Jalali deserves to get called up to the national team, because uh, until the f- maybe fifth or sixth week of the league, he was uh, 
he was playing inconsistently, you know, one good game, one bad game. And a player like that should not have been called up to the national team, in my opinion. But uh, after that, he's been starting uh, a lot, uh, some good assists as well uh, from the left side, some crosses. And like you said, we saw what he did against uh, USA. And um, especially with what's going on with Milad right now, I think he deserves to be in the national team ahead of him. Um, of course, he's at Estoril, as we mentioned, and, and they're having a good season. Um, as well on the Nekuna. How do you see not just them, but Persepolis and Sepahan so far this year? Is there any standout plays beyond what we would, let's say, expect that you think could could make a surprise inclusion in the um, in the Asian Cup as well? Um, uh, for your last question, I don't think there will be anyone surprising. They'll just be the normal guys from uh, the three teams. Uh, maybe you'll see a Jose Najad in there from Sepahan. Hopefully we do. He's a good player. Um, Esterlal, first of all, let's talk about them. Uh, they're currently second. Uh, they were first, but after the points were returned, uh, they dropped to second. Uh, they have been playing very good at home. So when they were hosts, they actually have a 100% win record. No points dropped uh, at home. Um, and we're almost at the halfway point of the season. So that's very good. But away from home, they really need to start improving. Uh, they've only won two of their away games. So if uh, they can play the same way that they play at home in their away games, I think they have a good chance of uh, winning the league. And maybe that's something Nekunam needs to work on, playing um, in a different uh, circumstances. Uh, the other two clubs, Sepahan, who are currently first with 31 points, uh, they've been playing some amazing football, especially over the last few weeks. Um, just scoring goals here and there. Uh, they've scored 32 goals, which is uh, like 11 more than the second team, which is Astaglal. Um, so, but even during the recent game, uh, some weird messed up things happened. They were actually banned from uh, having any fans in the stadium because they got two warnings from the Federation before because uh, their fans were, I think, throwing objects on the pitch or something, and they repeated the offense. So they, they didn't have any fans that game. They got they conceded a goal against Aluminium late on, at the, around the 82nd or 83rd minute. And then three of their players got second yellows. Um, they had to finish the game with eight players, and I think if they got one more red card, they, they would, it would have been a forfeit. So, like you said, the drama in the league is just crazy. Um, and then Paris Police, um, they started the season well, but um, maybe their AFC Champions League campaign wasn't as convincing, so it kind of affected their confidence. Uh, over the last 10 games, they have just two wins. Uh, one of them was against Havadar and the other against Shamsazar. So they're not on the best of forms right now, but we have always seen uh, Paris Police. Uh, we can never uh, put them out of the question and the title race, uh, they will just hit form any point of the season. And uh, I think they are also still one of the um, uh, title challengers for the league. Just before I move on to the Asian Champions League, who's been your biggest disappointment in the league this year? Um, all of the Khuzestani clubs, especially Fulad. Uh, right now, Fulad sit 11th with just three wins and 14 games. And it's not like some of those wins were deserved as well. They've been playing very bad football. Um, their coach right now is uh, Juan Martinez, who took charge, I think, three or four games ago. And uh, they've not changed much, sadly. Maybe maybe he needs a bit more time with the team to get familiar to Iranian football, you know. Uh, and uh, speaking of uh, Spanish managers, another Spanish manager that recently came into Iran was Lucas Alcaraz. Uh, he took charge of Nasoji, who even though are in the playing in the uh, AFC Champions League, they sit 15th, so second from bottom in the league, uh, just above Estela Khuzestan. So yeah, very disappointing season from both of them, both Nasoji and Fulad. And uh, Fulad reached the top eight of the AFC Champions League last year, and Nasoji did represent us as an Asia this year. So you would expect more from them, and I hope they get. Um, better as we progress along to the season. That brings me nicely to my next question, which was going to be about NASA. Obviously, we had three um, representatives 
in the AFC Champions League this year with Sepahan, Perspolis and Nasoji. And Nasoji is where I want to um, kind of ask you about because looking at their group, I would say it would have been, um, a, to me anyway, a surprise if they were going to go to the next round. Obviously, Al-Halal being the, the overwhelming favourite in that group, but Navbahor from Uzbekistan, I think, surprised a few people with their performances as well. So is it a massive disappointment to see Nasoji finishing third in that group? Uh, I think it's what was expected for them to not qualify, but I did expect better performances against Nav Bahor. Uh, those two games really disappointed me. The other games, you know, against Al Hilal and Mumbai, it was as expected. Um, Al Hilal, no one really expects Nasoji to beat that team. But even though in the game in Riyadh, they actually scored an amazing goal. I think Qad Rahmati scored it. Uh, and they played some good football, almost equalized late on, but um, they didn't really have anything to play for at that point. Uh, the two most important games were against Navbahor. Unfortunately, they lost both those games. Um, and I would say it was, uh, you can uh, separate Nasoji's performance and the ACL into two parts. The first part was their financial game. They got uh, a, good, a very good amount of money for a club of their size. Uh, hopefully, hopefully they spend it and uh, get actual uh, good facilities, improve their stadium. Uh, we saw they couldn't host games because their stadium isn't up to standard. So maybe that's something they can work on. Um, and the other part is how they played on the pitch. And well, we also, it wasn't the best. Hopefully they can improve on it. Daniel, Perspolis and Sepahan were in groups with another two Saudi giants in Al Ittihad and Al Nasser. And I think, considering the the spending that the Saudi clubs have done in the last year or so, it's only natural that they would be the favourites in in every group that they're in. Um, now Sepahan and Perspolis, of course, in the next round, how far do you think they can go? Is it is it safe to assume that it, it will be one of either Al Ittihad, Al Hilal, or or Al Nas reaching uh, the latter stages. Is Perspolis qualified to the next round because they, they're second? No, of they, missed they missed oh, out. Oh, have they? Okay, my apologies. yeah, they're they're second of their group, so it wasn't it was the best. Three uh, of the five, three of the five yes. second place advance. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, it's only Sepahan. Um, well, I don't think uh, with all the the new signings in. Um, in Saudi League, I think it will be a Saudi team that will uh, uh, win the uh, AFC Champions League. So maybe uh, uh, Al uh, Al Hilal or uh, Al Nasr. I I I, I would bet on, on those two and on the on our team. Well, of course uh, they 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 weren't favorites uh, in their groups, but. Uh, in general, I was a bit disappointed to see only three teams and not four uh, in our Champions League and to see only one um, qualifying from the uh, group stages. So it's Sepahan. Uh, I would have expected Paris Police to go to go to the next round too. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a deception since Iran should be one of the um, biggest uh, nations of football in Asia. But uh, yeah, well, we have only one club. I think Uzbekistan have two and uh, Saudi Arabia three or four, four maybe. So yes, I would have expected more. Erfan, what, what are your thoughts on, on Sepahan as well on the Jose Marais and of course with the team that they have, which you said you were impressed by. How do you think they can perform in the latter stages of the tournament? Um, so yeah, I'll talk about both Sepahan and Perth, please. First of all, Sepahan, I think they got better and better as the Champions League campaign progressed. Uh, they started a bit shaky. They conceded a late equalizer against uh, Air Force of Iraq. But after that, they had some good performances. Unfortunately, they that game against al Ittihad we couldn't see in Isfahan. I really wanted to see that game, so it's very unfortunate what happened. Uh, but the other two games against uh, AGMK, uh, they won both away in Uzbekistan and at home demolished them 9-0 and it could have been more. Um, the al had game also was um, very good. They played really, really good. They should not have lost that game. 
they had some good chances and Aleta had scored uh, on the counter. Uh, so we, we've seen the quality. We've seen how good they can play. Uh, we've seen Ramin. We talked about him earlier. He's been one of he's actually one of the top scorers in the Champions League, believe it or not, as a defender. Um, so yeah, even if they play against the Saudi side, let's say you get Al Halal or uh, Al Al Nasser, I think they do have a good chance. So I wouldn't count them out just yet. Um, and then the other team, Persepolis, uh, I'm very disappointed at them because they they had a fairly tough group for a seeded team uh, but when it's in your hands uh, going to the last game I'm talking about uh, they played against Adohel at home and uh, they had a penalty late on they could have won it all but unfortunately they missed and Adohel got a second goal and that, that just ruined their whole campaign and they needed one point one more point, I believe, to qualify, or two more. And uh, they just lost silly points along the way. Uh, the most important one was the game against Estekol in Tajikistan. Uh, you should be winning that game against the Tajik side. and Iranian side should be winning any day of the week. Uh, they conceded an equalizer around the 75th minute. So, Persepolis, you know, they've, they're probably our best representative in Asia over the past few years. Um, um, they couldn't make it to the knockouts this time, and I think that's purely their fault. I've just looked up that game as well that they lost against Aldo Hale, and I saw that Mike, Michael Olunga scored, which just feels like every time he plays against an Iranian team, he always scores at least one, if if not more. Um, brilliant. I think that covers everything that we wanted to discuss on this episode. Is there anything else that either of you guys wanted to to mention, to go through at all? Last time we did a, a, the pod together, uh, Sinal, was uh, last year uh, uh, before the, the World Cup. So let's hope that this time we'll give uh, more luck to, to our team uh, uh, for the Asian Cup. <laughs> hopefully, it's, hopefully. It's interesting you mentioned that because obviously we're going to have a lot more episodes uh, coming in the next few weeks with the Asian Cup only being around the corner. Um do you guys know when the squad announcement is going to be? I feel like I read it will be um, in the first week of January, if not the first of January. I think it should be after the last uh, PGPL game. That's how they always do it, at least. So, yeah. right, so we could see it next week even. We're going to have an episode on the back of the squad announcement and to preview the tournament. And of course, as always, there'll be... Um, episodes with our experts going through going through each game but guys thank you so much for your time today it was great to speak to you both and thank you for listening um as always if you have any comments any any feedback then please feel free to get in touch but if not then we look forward to uh, to seeing you on the next episode cheers guys thank you very much international football commentator Derek Ray from ESPN and EA Sports. You're listening to Gulbazan Podcast.